Welcome to the second series of the stories behind the songs with Dave Kittle. Back in 1979, Dave began a radio career at Shea 106 in Ottawa, which spanned 17 years. He was one of the on-air voices that I grew up listening to, and he introduced me to new music that literally changed my life. His knowledge and passion for music are inspiring, to say the least. And in this 12-part podcast, Dave talks about eight of his favorite songs and the history of how those songs came to be. So pull up a chair and join us for the stories behind the songs. The next song I want to talk about is from one of my all-time favorite bands, The Faces. The Faces, okay. The Faces. Originally The Small Faces, a London-based band, um, very, very mod band. Now, if you're not familiar with the mod, the whole mod uh, phenomenon in Britain, it never caught on over here at all, but it was a big phenomenon in Britain in the early to mid sixties. The mods and the rockers yeah. were two f- groups of kids. The mods all dressed very sharply, very, very. The they, Beatles were mods, right? Uh, or not, sort of? not really, not really. The the mods, were... the mods used to drive or the, the mods spent a lot of their money on their clothes and they drove around on on Vespa motor scooters and had big long raincoats and that kind of thing. Anyway, anyway, the the, the small faces were a mod band. Okay, uh, Steve Marriott, Kenny Jones, Ronnie Lane, and Ian McLaughlin, the original faces. Um, uh, huge band in the UK, very very big band. Never really made much of an impact over here. Ichiku Park was their only hit. Okay. In pretty much in North America, but they were very very big band in the UK. Um, probably because they were uh, they were considered a mod band, and the mod the whole mod culture never caught on over here in North America. So that's probably one of the reasons why they. Uh... Anyway, in uh, when um, the fa- when when Steve Marriott uh, left the Faces to form Humble Pie with Peter Frampton. Okay. Uh, the Faces carried on with uh, two new members uh, by the name of Rod Stewart <laughs> yes, and, yes, yes. and Ronnie Wood, right. who had just left the Jeff Beck group. Right. And they changed the name to The Small Faces, and they uh, went on a bit of a run. A very popular band, uh, especially here in North America. Uh, not so much for their, their their great music they 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 did okay they had a couple of hits but but because of their image they were a great live act and because they were they were so much fun to watch on stage they drank a lot they kibbutzed with each other they stumbled around they fell over <laughs> each other they were sloppy as hell but they but it worked for them right and they had a great front man in Rod Stewart now uh, tensions in the faces started to arise very quickly because Rod Stewart's solo career started to become very big. He started focusing a lot more on his solo career. He'd had a couple of big solo albums, uh, Gasoline Alley, Every Picture Tells a Story, a couple of big hits with Maggie May. Mm. And he was starting to focus on his solo career yeah. Even though he was still the lead singer in the Faces, and the rest of the guys in the Faces didn't like this too much because they thought that he should focus more of his energy and his attention on the band yeah. rather than the solo career. And yeah. there was cracks were beginning to show in there, in in the Faces. And um, when it came time to record their fourth album, uh, an album called Ooh La La. Um, things were not going very well between the two groups, okay. Rod Stewart and the rest of the band. Anyway, uh, their producer, Glenn Johns, managed to um, pull the band together uh, to make what many consider to be their best album ever, uh, the album Ooh La La, and the title track, uh, Ooh La La, which was one of uh, several songs on the album that Rod Stewart did not appear on. Oh. He didn't play on it because he was, again, spending more and more time in his solo career. He wasn't getting along very well with his bandmates, so he was missing recording sessions. Okay. And so Ron Wood, who wrote the song Ooh La La, 
uh, along with bassist Ronnie Lane, uh, sang the title track to Ooh La La. Um, it's, it's Ooh La La has been uh, has has had a resurgence in, a resurgence in popularity recently because it's being used in a TV commercial. Good song, Ooh La La. Uh, great band. Shortly after the release of the album, uh, Rod Stewart uh, slogged it in the press. Didn't like it at all, and okay. this forced Ronnie Lane, the bass player, to quit the band. And um, uh, he was replaced by uh, a Japanese bass player by the name of Tetsu Yamuchi. Okay. Uh, the Faces would record a couple more singles and tour again for the next couple of years before they finally split up for good in 1975. Uh, Rod Stewart continued on with his solo career. He went through the stratosphere, became a superstar. Yeah. And Ronnie Wood joined the Rolling Stones. Right. And that was the end of the faces, unfortunately. Right. Uh, great band. Didn't really get the credit that they d- that I think that they deserved okay. uh, because they were just a, a fun band to watch. And, and uh, their biggest hit probably was Stay With Me. Okay. And, yes, uh, yes, yes. A great song. But uh, I've always liked this song, Ooh La La. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite songs written by, and sung by Ronnie Wood, but a very interesting, uh, inter- very interesting band, the small faces. Cool. Finally got inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame, uh, many years later. And, uh, and, uh, I think one of, uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite sort of, uh, bubbling under bands of all time, yeah. the faces and the small faces. Very cool. Yeah. Let's talk about, uh, arguably, I think the greatest rock band in Canadian history. Okay. The Guess Who. All right. With all with 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 all apologies to the tragically hips who 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 the tip, hip not hips, hip <laughs> who um, you know many think is yeah. the greatest Canadian rock band of all time. I digress. Yeah, uh, I think I, it's Bachman Turner Overdrive. Uh, That's my opinion. Bachman Turner Overdrive yeah. could be up there as well. I think the Guess Who, uh, my personal opinion, are yeah. the greatest Band yeah. ever to come out of Canada yeah. because for several and, and reasons. Randy Bachman was in it, so there you he go. Was, you he was. He was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for several reasons, uh, one of them being they had big hits in the states long before uh, the CRTC um, ruling that you had to play Canadian music on Canadian radio. Okay. The Guess Who did it without that. Yeah. They were one of the few the few acts Canadian acts. Uh, Paul Anka, Gordon Lightfoot, the Guess Who that managed to achieve. Yeah. Not only big, huge success in Canada, but also, ar- around the rest of the world without the aid of the CRTC rulings. Right. And also because of Burton Cummings, who I think has arguably the greatest voice in pop music history. Uh, I don't think there's anybody that can touch him as far as just pure vocal talent. He, okay. His voice is just fa- fantastic. Uh, the song that w- I was focusing on today is one of my favorite Guess Who songs, and not one of their better-known songs, but a song called Bus Rider, okay. which uh, comes from their um, seventh studio album, Share the Land, is the opening track, uh, which was released in, in October 1970, produced by Jack Richardson, who produced uh, all of the Guess Who material. Okay. Jack Richardson would all later on go on to uh, produce Bob Seger. He would produce Alice Cooper. He produced Kim Mitchell and Max Webster. Oh, wow. And mortgaged his home uh, in order to raise money to make the first Guess Who album wow. Wow. in 1968, Wheatfield Soul, uh, because of the song These Eyes. Mm. He loved the song These Eyes, and uh, he wanted to produce them and uh, mortgaged his house to raise money in order to produce the Guess Who wow. and produce them. So he obviously quickly. believed that that song was going to be a hit. And it was a massive, a massive hit. These Eyes was a, was a huge song. Uh, Bus Rider, I've always liked Bus Rider, um, uh, was um, the first, the, uh, because uh, it's just a great song, and uh, it was the uh, the first album, Share the Land, was the first album uh, the Guess Who made after the departure of Randy Bachman uh, in, uh, in uh, October 1970, written by Kurt Winter, okay. who was one of the two guitar players, uh, he and Greg Leskew, that uh, replaced... Randy Backman in the Guess Who. Okay. Randy Backman is a f- founding member of the Guess Who. He yeah. was he was in the band even before Burton Cummings was. And um, of course, their massive uh, American Woman album yeah. and single, which went to number one in the United States. Both of them did went to number one in the United States. And Randy Backman left the Guess Who shortly after that because he was a Mormon. Uh, Randy Backman was a devout Mormon. Right. Right. And 
did not like the lifestyle that the other members of the band were leading. Uh, they were taking advantage of the fact that they were a very successful rock band. See, what do you mean, Dave? Like they, <laughs> they could just like sleep in the mornings and then get coffee whenever they want. Yeah, or? that and the fact that they, you know, they liked uh, they liked to do drugs and they mm. liked to uh, cavort with members of the opposite sex oh, okay. and that kind of thing. I was wondering if that's what you and meant. And Randy Bachman didn't like that, being a devout Mormon, so I, he that decided. Makes sense. So he decided to leave the Guess Who, yeah. and uh, and did pretty well on his own. Oh yeah, he really he released a solo album. Uh, at first, which didn't really do very well, and then he formed a band called Brave Belt. You might remember yeah, the song I Brave yes, Belt. Yes, Brave Belt. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, with his old uh, friend Fred Turner, Fred Turner from Winnipeg, yeah. formed a band called Bachman Turner Overdrive. Overdrive. And his brother Robbie was the drummer. And uh, his other brother Tim, Tim was the was bass the player. second was, was the, the second, second guitar player. Tim and Robbie were in the band early on. Yes. Uh, for their first couple of albums, and then yeah. Tim left, and they re he was replaced, and then, and then their other guitar player, whose name I can't think of, it'll yeah. come to me, was with the band for the big hits, taking care of business, not yeah. fragile. Um, oh, great song! Uh, roll yeah. on down the highway, all those, all those songs. But uh, uh, yeah, and did very, very well with Bachman Turner Overdrive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, very very well. But I've always liked uh, I've always liked the song "Guess the Bus Rider" by the Guess Who. The Guess Who continued on for for many many years afterwards. They had uh, numerous personnel changes over the years. Uh, Dominic Triano later on played okay. uh, guitar. Uh, Dougie McDougal uh, later on played guitar. Uh, Don McDougal or Doug McDougal or Don McDougal play, later on played guitar with the Guess Who. <clears throat> but they had all kinds of different personnel changes over the years. They reformed in various combinations over the years. Yeah. And Jim Cale, the original bass player of the band. Yeah. Uh, now owns the name the Guess Who, uh, because he uh, found out at one point that the Guess Who's name had never been registered. No, he found that out. It had never been registered, and so he registered it, and he now owns the name Guess Who. Wow. So Burton Cummings and Randy Bachman cannot go out if they ever wanted to. Could not go out as the Guess Who anymore. Jim Cale, who still tours around yeah. as the the Guess Who owns the name the okay. guess who all right yeah. so he's protected then he's he's he registered registered the name <laughs> yeah but small uh, oversight there yeah. Yeah. but i always like the guess who and i always like the song bus rider great great song cool. great tune you've been listening to the stories behind the songs with dave kittle join us again for the next part in this series brought to you by Sunholes music download the latest album now at sunholes.com